In the Assassin's Creed franchise, parkour is every player character's primary means of traversal. By holding down two buttons, just one in newer games, you will automatically flow over any obstacles in your path, climb any structure, and jump over any gap. It's easy, fluid, and intuitive. However, as the years went on and we got closer to today, the developers began to streamline more, making the games easier still to play and easier to control. There's just a problem with the way they achieved this. They didn't make them easier to control merely by improving the controls. They made them easier to control by removing certain mechanics completely so that players never had to worry about them. That makes sense, you just don't concern yourself with what doesn't exist, so your mind has less to be overwhelmed with. Though, for players of the original games this hurt a bit, as we were suddenly disallowed to do certain advanced techniques that were not only instinctive by that point, but were also often used to save our lives, express ourselves through movement, or recover from mistakes. As a result, gameplay in the new games can sometimes feel restrictive and more frustrating by comparison. Especially in the case of techniques that we used to recover from fatal errors, it was easy to feel that something was unfair, that you died through no fault of your own. Overall, we'd be much more frustrated and die more. Control was taken away from us in favor of automation. Due to that increased automation, sometimes your character will happen to move in a way you don't expect, and it used to be a nice thing to do to use certain mechanics and be able to compensate for actions the game liked to do more often. Since we knew which mistakes were likely to occur in certain contexts, they became predictable and were easy to play around. For example, running up walls by accident is a known likelihood. So whenever you're cornering in the early games, you could release your legs button for a smoother turn with zero chance of failure. If your jump happened to be a little short, all it asked of you was a little attention and engagement, and with a press of a button you could reach out and grab onto a nearby handhold. If your jump was slightly miscalculated, you'd save yourself. If your jump was so poor that even this couldn't save you, you'd simply desynchronize. There was a failure spectrum of aerial gameplay. The spectrum has now either lessened, or deleted. The technique I'm talking about there is, of course, catch ledge. To recap, when your assassin is falling through the air for any reason, holding down your free hand button will have the falling assassin reach out with their arm in any direction you tilted your left stick or pressed your movement keys in. So say you're falling down what would normally be a lethal drop that would shatter your bones and turn you to mush, if you're clever and fast enough to spot a handhold nearby on a building as you fell past it, you can catch onto that structure and save your own life, grinning in the face of your own mortality. Catch Ledge also allowed certain advanced movements like literally side jumping while hanging on a building and then re-grabbing onto the same building, letting you move left or right at ludicrous velocity. I want you to imagine growing to feel safer in your movements with this ability in place, that you could trust it, rely on it, that if you played right, it'd never let you down, that whenever you made a minor or even major mistake, you could save yourself and breathe a sigh of relief as you remind yourself, hey, let's not make that mistake next time, let's be more careful around this area the next time I'm here. The game makes its lesson known, without having it be an outright punishment. Imagine that with this ability, you could move through the world so much faster, at the cost of a little extra attention. When you were tired or unfocused, you could easily flow through an environment. When your mind was alight with interest and attention on the world around you, you could move at a slightly faster rate, because of the mechanic, and it would feel quite exhilarating. The game rewarded you and recognized you for being passionate about its interesting movement gameplay, for learning this technique. And since one of the most wonderful things for any player is to see other players loving the same game they do, teaching other players this mechanic, like teaching them any other, was an enjoyable thing to do. I want you to imagine what it would feel like then, after you'd grown accustomed to this ability, to launch the next generation iteration of the Assassin's Creed franchise and find that this ability seemed to just be gone. No longer could you reach out with a hand, attempting to grasp in whichever direction seemed wisest. For the most part, it seemed alright at first, because you didn't really need to. Until you noticed that it was very much still possible to kill yourself through a faulty jump, whether your fault or that of the automated controls, which were now even more so, many actions not even animating or firing off unless you were in the exact context Unity wanted you to be in. No longer could you try to use this missing mechanic to accelerate your movement ever so slightly, and be proud of the different micro decisions you might have made contrasted with those of another player, because both of you now had one less major option to pick from. 
when you screwed up a jump, whether lethal or simply damaging, you had nothing to call upon. In a way, movement became simpler, but in another way, staying alive after a made mistake became literally impossible. Before, if you messed up, you had a chance. Now, if you mess up, you are dead. This was the case for one of the most controversial games in the entire franchise, Assassin's Creed Unity. Infamous for having an abysmal launch riddled with bugs and technical issues, a poorly concluded story and a present day narrative layer that was utterly meaningless and practically hostile to anyone who loves this aspect of Assassin's Creed. All of this was true, sure, but far from the whole picture, and this next part is something players often forget or conveniently look away from. There's really no shame in looking straight at it, and it happens to be that, beyond these things, some of which can be patched out or addressed, AC Unity contains fundamental design problems as a video game, as an interactive work expecting to be engaged with by a thinking, feeling player. These problems are intrinsic to the game and can never be patched out. The fixes required for some of these would have asked of Ubisoft to rip many systems or mechanics out and rebuild them from scratch, and right this time. That wasn't going to happen, so we just had to deal with them. And dealing with them was sometimes an exercise in withstanding what felt like unfair punishments. One of these problems is the lessened agency and control, in a game that touted being even more complex and advanced than its mechanics, and was proud of letting its player crouch and auto-navigate downwards for the first time in franchise history. Because in this game, which also for the first time in series history gave us accurately scaled one-to-one -one cities, environments where movement mechanics like this one would be even more critical, we suddenly found one of our most useful abilities was just gone. Are you surprised that this made a lot of people angry? Are you surprised that someone who cares for this series as deeply as I do felt a cold disappointment? Without Catch Ledge, the tall drops between now even taller rooftops were extra lethal, and worse still if you happen to take damage while climbing a high wall, say from a bullet shot by fairly accurate gunners, you had no recourse. Taking this damage caused you to fall off the building immediately and you could no longer save yourself by re-grabbing a handhold as you fell a bit lower. In the old games, being struck by a stone or shot with an arrow would have a similar effect, but the likes of Altair or even Desmond himself could always count on their will to live and grab a handhold to save themselves in mid-air. All of this in Unity amounts to dying due to behaviors in the game that the player does not have a response to. The only genuine answer is a dry and disappointing, just don't let it happen in the first place. Just don't be surrounded by 17 guards without smoke bombs. Just don't let anyone shoot you when you're on a building. Just don't ever make a faulty jump. Just don't ever have bad luck with the automated controls that flings you off a rooftop. Just be perfect all the time. That's all you have to do. I hope that my subtle tone here is enough to let you feel how wrong this all would be. But I'm not here just to talk about painful things. I'm also here to give a bit of good news, a bit of warm moonlight in this frigid darkness. Now, years later, years after release, after most players have moved on and a dedicated few still play, me and a few others have found out and tested and confirmed that Catch Ledge is in Assassin's Creed Unity. Hey, breathe. It's alright. I know. I'm surprised too, and I teared up when Sfoof, a user on the AC subreddit, sent me clips of how they discovered a consistent method. The game never teaches this to the player, and the controls for it are different enough from the previous games that discovering it could have only happened through a combination of knowing what direction to think in and test in, having different people try various things, and some blind luck. And we got insanely lucky. On top of this, it is an officially recognized assassin behavior, as the game actually grants you creed points, labeling it a breakfall if used to save yourself from fatal damage. Having found out how to do it, and having concluded that it is consistent and repeatable, and it's not very difficult either, was quite a euphoric moment for me. To catch ledge in AC Unity, you must ensure Arno is falling close enough to a wall to have this happen, because you cannot reach out omnidirectionally with your hand in this game. As Arno is about to strike the wall from the front, maybe even slightly off-angle, tapping your loot or parkour down button just once, just before impact, will cause you to grab a handhold and stop your descent. Decent tells of whether this will be possible are if you see Arno either flailing or windmilling his arms, suggesting he's lost air control after making a leap a little too daring. Another tell is if you see your trajectory not smoothly arcing through the air horizontally, but arcing more harshly downwards. 
Usually impacting a wall after this kind of animation will cause you to wall bounce off of it and plummet to a premature desynchronization. I recommend practicing this technique at a good place to try it. Most of the time you won't need to use this ability because a majority of the jumps you'll make will be just fine. But the times that you would normally die from slamming directly into a wall formerly with no option when that happened except to spiritually accept a desynchronization five years before you even hit the ground, now you can save yourself by tapping your parkour down button just before Arno touches it. The window for this seems pretty generous too, and the only real requirement is that there is actually a handhold where you're about to hit and the wall isn't just smooth. Now you might be asking, as I did, can you catch a ledge if shot off a building by gunners? Sort of. I need to do a bit more testing on this maybe, but it's really hard to make him re-grab. For me this is not consistent, and I've only done it once or twice, and if I had to speculate as to why it's so hard, it's probably because the game checks for a wall bounce or damage that causes you to stop grabbing a handhold and prevents catching ledges for a certain window of time after it. But it's better than nothing by far. This overall has been one of the pain points with this game and this generation of AC games that I almost always bring up. A loss of control, a loss of agency, leading to painful and disappointing deaths that we do not feel responsible for. Not a pleasant scenario, but one that, at least in this game, has been scoured away just a little bit more. It's not gonna fix everything, but yeah. Massive special thanks to Sfoof, Treviso, and Assassinos for helping me test and think about all of this, and to all of you who have watched my videos, read my articles, and helped make me someone worth paying attention to. Without that, nobody would have discovered my call for help on documenting AC Unity's gameplay, and maybe the specifics of this strange iteration of Catch Ledge would have never been found, but they have been. Which, to me, marks Assassin's Creed Unity more or less as being knowledge complete. And that... that feels pretty good. I hope to see you all in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, stay sneaky, and go catch some ledges. For me.